These are the names of the sons of Israel who went to Egypt with Jacob, each with his family, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Jerboam, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The descendants of J Jacob number 17 in all. Joseph was already in Egypt. Now Joseph and all his brothers and all the generation died, but the Israelites were exceedingly fruitful. They multiplied greatly, increased in numbers, and became so numerous that the land was filled with them. The, then a new king, to <coughs> whom Joseph meant nothing, came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become far too numerous from us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous, and if war breaks out, we will join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor, and they built Pithom and Ramesses as, the, as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and worked them ruthlessly. They made their lives better with harsh labor in brick and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields. And all their harsh labor, the Egyptians worked them ruthlessly. Exodus chapter, chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. I want to talk about the Pharaoh. This Pharaoh was new king of Egypt at back time, long time ago. He was so afraid that the Israelites, people, will populate their land. And somehow, at some point, this enemy attacks them. Maybe they will join the enemy and attack the Egypt. So Pharaoh was so afraid of them, and he had him in his mind that he would do something about this. So he tried to kill all the babies of Israelites. So what happened was Israelites are so populated, so the king put them as a slave. When they were in the slavery, they work really, really hard, really harshly, that you can never rest. Slavery is so, so harsh that you can really imagine yourself being a slave, right? When your mom or dad tells you to do every single thing, do you feel satisfied or do you feel happy about it? No, right? But there's no love, there's no any mercy, but you have to work, work, work every single day. So people were groaning and sad and afraid at the same time. So they cry out to the Lord. When they cry out, God heard their voice. But before that, I talk about what happened. I would like to talk about Moses when he was only three months old. He was a little, little tiny baby, but he has to be thrown out into the Nile River. So his mother made a basket out of papyrus, and then he put the oil so that the water can get inside the basket. So she let him go on the Nile River. Maybe she would have prayed. But at the same time, his sister was watching over him in the distance. When she watched, she saw that there was Pharaoh's daughter was bathing and this pharaoh's daughter saw that basket and what's that bring it on so the servant of hers brought the basket to her and when the pharaoh's daughter saw this baby crying she felt so sad and felt sorry for this little tiny baby so she decided to adopt him but before that, when her, his sister saw this pharaoh's daughter got this, his brother, she said, oh, wait, do you want someone to nurse him? And she said, yeah, I think I needed some help. And I'm going to pay for what she does. So his actual mother came and nursed him until he grew a little bit, little bit older. Maybe, I don't know, when he's how old, 
he was, but after he grew up, he sent back to the Pharaoh's daughter, and he was raised up in king's palace. And after a few, few, maybe many, many years, he became really a little bit older than I am, and he saw his own fellow Hebrew were fighting each other. But before that, he saw Hebrew men and the Egyptians were putting so harsh on them. So he stopped this Egyptian and killed. And secretly, he hid them on the sand. But later on, the rumor spread around. He felt really, really scared. He found that this fellow Hebrew didn't like him either. And they don't recognize him as a leader. So he ran away. He ran, 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 ran. He ran. After all the journey he had, he settled in Midian. In the Midian, he got married, and he had two sons. But most importantly in this wilderness, he, he, was, he became a shepherd. When he became a shepherd, he was fostering, and he was going and going to the mountain. And then he was in the Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is where the holy presence of God was there. And he was there. He met God. It's not like this. He met God. It was in the burning bush that never ends fire. When he touched it, he didn't feel any heat. It wasn't hot. So he got closer and closer. When he was about to touch it, God present was right there before him. And he bowed. He bowed his knees. And when the God said, Moses, Moses, he said, who are you? I am here. And God says, take off your sandals. So he took off his sandals. And then he listened to God. God really wanted him to rescue his people. Have you heard about the crossing the Red Sea? God wanted him to rescue his people from Egypt and go to the promised land. But Moses felt really, really bad because he was far away from his home and no one likes him. He was very afraid. So he said, no, Lord, nor God, I don't deserve. I can't speak, and I don't know what to do. No one's going to follow me. No one's going to take me. No one's going to believe me that you talk to me. And you know what? Surprisingly, God was angry at the same time when he said that, but he was conveying him and said, Trust me, I will be with you, and take up your staff, your rod, and I will show the wonders of God. I will show you the miracle. So he went back to Egypt. He went back, and he met his brother Aaron, and Surprisingly, they really welcomed him after he showed what the wonders that God had shown him. And they were together to do the God's work. And then they planned to go to the Pharaoh. They went to the Pharaoh and he said, let my people go. But obviously, Pharaoh said, hmm. Who is this guy? Are you a magician? Who are you to say, let my people go? These are my property. But he was brave enough to say that God, who is God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, is with him and wanted this people of Israelites to lead them to the promised land. So... 
when he said that, Pharaoh denies, Pharaoh didn't like the fact that he won his property be gone. So he said, no, -uh, I'm, I'm not going to do that. But for 10 times, do you remember the 10 plagues? God showed these miracles, these plagues, in order to persuade, somehow show him it's not him who has the power over the world. It was God, the Lord, the Savior, has the ultimate power. So after the pan, ten plagues, at the night, God killed the son, the firstborn son, all over the Israelites. Firstborn son died. And even Israelites, if they didn't put the, the shepherds, um, the sheep blood on their door, then the angel of God will take their lives away. This is very important for all of us to remember that this event that God passed over, passed over them. So today, until this day, Israelites remember this day and keep this day holy. Anyhow, I'll go back to the story. So after this 10 plagues, Pharaoh finally decide. You can't go now. Just get out of my face. So all the Israelites were so happy. So they went back and praising the Lord. And they were so settled down and they put their tents and they just relaxed. But after they heard some noise, they saw that Egyptians were coming after them. Oh, no. What are we going to do, Moses? And Moses prayed. And God gave him the answer. He said, take your rod, raise your hand over the river, and then the Red Sea departed in two, divided in two. And people were so amazed. Wow, is it real? So they all crossed over. Everybody, even the little kids, the flocks they have, everybody were crossed over that Red Sea. But the Pharaoh saw that and they, were, they wanted to catch up and they wanted to kill them. So... When they're about to end, get into the river, God put the river into the same place where it was and swallow up everybody. So that's how God did the miracle to save the lives of Israelites. When they were saved, they were so amazed and so glad and happy, but at the same time, they were just so used to this amazing, amazing protection from God. After several years, several hours, they've been traveling around, around and around in the wilderness for 40 years. They've been complaining, hey Moses, we want more food. We want meat that is from Egypt. You know, when we live back there, we got a lot, a lot of food we want. Now we don't have anything to eat. Please. Are you going to let us die in the wilderness? Moses had felt really, really frustrated, but he said, okay, quiet. And he prayed, and God provided the manna and quail to provide him the food. And even when they were thirsty, God provided water, not with the rain that we, you, we have, but with the stone that God ordered him to put the staff on the stone, and God let this happen. So God provided everything that they need, but Israelites groaned, and they were not satisfied enough. 
Boys and girls, I want to point out something to you guys. Moses was a good leader, right? He rescued them from the wilderness, uh, from the Egypt, and also they, he directed them to the promised land. Isn't he a good person? He's a hero, right? But you know what? Do you remember when he ran away from his home back in Egypt? He felt that he could save the people with his power, but he couldn't do that. But after he met God on the burning bush, he realized that it wasn't him. It was God who provides the power, who do the miracles, who do everything. So, boys and girls, I want you to remember that this is not the magic could happen to him, but it was God who provided the power and rescued them from all the suffering they had. And I would like to remind you one more time that God loves you so much. And he gave us 10 commandments to keep. I'm going to show you this 10 commandments. Do you guys remember everything? And can we keep these Ten Commandments? I want you guys to think about this with your parents and with, when we have a discussion panel. And do you, I hope you remember these Ten Commandments and talk with your friends also. By the way, um, when Moses died, and the in the mountain he didn't he couldn't go to the promised land all he could do was just watch in the distance boys and girls and the families mothers and fathers um, please remember that you're not alone god remembers you and god wants to protect you from every suffering that we have but remember that it wasn't us who were able to survive, but it was God's protection that we were able to survive in this harsh world that we are living in. Let us pray together.